So you know those games which you already know are really fucking good and don't even need a review. Well, fuck it. This is what I've been playing recently, so here's a bloody review. Red Dead Redemption 2. Should I buy it? Rockstar's Wild Western Adventure released in 2018, eight years after its critically acclaimed predecessor, Red Dead Redemption. As always, my review will score the game according to our 10 pillars of gaming, and they begin with the story. A key ingredient in an open world RPG, does Rockstar deliver another one of their story masterpieces? Yes. God, a thousand times yes. The story is deep and complex and really focuses on the relationships that our protagonist, Arthur Morgan, builds and how those relationships change as the game progresses. An important in-game event happens around three quarters into the game, which really changes the way that the story feels and our own outlook on it. I won't say what it is for those that haven't played it yet, but it's a really unique concept. A blurb of the plotline would basically read, a gang of outlaws struggle to accept and adapt to the changing and newly civilized world. And you really feel that. You simply don't fit in. The world is growing around you and you genuinely feel hunted. From beginning to end, it's a roller coaster, complete with a flash forward epilogue chapter to add the final bit of seasoning to a delicious rockstar meal. These developers consistently make me cry following the deaths of certain characters in their previous titles. <laughs> Miss you guys. And this game is no bloody exception. Buckets. Literally buckets. A very first for a Ghost of Fana review, the story scores a perfect 10. Setting. The game takes place in 1899 in a fictionalized USA featuring western areas, grizzly mountains and the racist deep south. As per the time, the world is on the cusp of civilization. The time of the Wild West is no more, and the government wants to eradicate gangs and outlaws. So much works in this world. Firstly, it's colossal, which makes exploring it an absolute dream. Also, it's really diverse. You could be participating in the 1899 equivalent of the Royal Rumble in the Valentine Saloon, a still fairly uncivilized livestock town. Then a 10 minute horse ride, you could find yourself watching a theater show at the theater in the advancing city of Saint Denis. But even aside from the cities, the wilderness areas are so fun to explore. You get to the point where you do a handbrake stop with your horse every time you see a cabin or a shack in the woods. I mean, ordinarily, you'd completely ignore a creepy fucking looking house in the middle of nowhere, right? But this is a video game and I saved recently. In typical Rockstar fashion, there are several Easter eggs and nods to other games or pieces of fiction and a huge amount of humor, equaled by a real collection of fucking weirdness. For example, on one casual Sunday afternoon, I found myself enjoying a nice meal with an incestuous brother and sister and then tied up and seemingly raped by a guy who lives in a swamp. Overall, the setting is beautiful, gritty and Moorish. Nine characters. A tough one to review because there are so many and unlike most games in this genre, they're kind of all main characters or certainly contribute hugely to the plot. For those who have played Red Dead Redemption, some characters will be familiar, but as this is a prequel, it's really interesting to see them many years before. You also learn more about certain characters, even leading to you liking some of those who you may have disliked in the first game. Now I admit, when the game details were released and I found out we weren't going to be playing as our old mate John Marston from the first game, I was slightly disappointed, but that's credit to Rockstar's character development. In truth, Arthur Morgan is everything I could have wanted. Funny, witty, angry, moody, and a hell of a shot. There's hours of hilarious dialogue from him which is wonderfully voiced by Roger Clark. In fact, every voice actor is superb in this game, especially Benjamin Byron Davis and Peter Blomquist who voice Dutch and Micah respectively. With the camp exploration mechanic, you can learn so much more about your gang via conversations and eavesdropping in a totally non-subtle fashion of other members of the camp having deep private conversations or even arguments. This helps you to understand their characters more and see their behavior change as the game and scenario progresses. It also makes you care for the smaller characters of the gang. Nine, gameplay. Okay, let's start with horse riding because if you like to explore, you're going to be doing quite a lot of it. 
in my opinion, and I, I may be wrong, please let me know below if so, this is the best horse riding mechanics ever in a video game. Every motion is seamless from rearing your horse, skidding across a patch of mud, or even galloping into a rock and flying off your mount. Well, kind of. Unlike Skyrim, you can't ride sideways up a mountain, which leads to you following the road like a fucking normal person. Shooting is fine, it doesn't massively develop on the previous title, but did it need to? It's certainly satisfying, especially popping into Deadeye and firing a shotgun slug right into some poor guy's bell end. Oh, God, I love this game. The best element of gameplay, in my opinion, is hunting. I've never really been into hunting. I'm normally more of a fast food type of RPG gamer, but I found myself hooked. The fact animal skins can be used for camp upgrades and clothing adds an extra incentive. The ability to rob is really cool. However, my inner morality felt wrong robbing women. So mostly I tried to rob shady looking characters, which normally led to a gunfight, which I won. Finally, conversations are brilliant. You don't have dialogue choices, which is something I love in Bethesda and Bioware games, but we know this isn't the Rockstar way. You do, however, have the choice to simply greet or antagonize NPCs or even your own camp members. This can lead to some hilarious lines, particularly if you follow up a friendly greet with an antagonize like this. That's a fine horse you got there. Thank you. How long you been married? Just keep your traps shut. With a game this long and large, the gameplay has to hold your interest as much as the story does. And it does. However, for me, it's kind of nothing revolutionary. 8. Visuals. With a game of this size and budget, the visuals should be very good. And they are. If you're someone who likes to take in-game photos when you play, then you're going to be able to grab some really nice ones, especially up in the snowy mountains, which boasts some lovely views. The immersive world adds to the visuals. For example, fighting in the muddy street will lead to Arthur's face and clothes becoming dirty and remain so until you get a bath. Rainy days will drench your clothes and your horse's coats and you'll have no problem noticing the temperature as you will see Arthur's frosty breath emit from his mouth. The negatives, sometimes clothing can be a bit jarring. For example, if Arthur sports a beard, it can sometimes overlap your neckwear and just look a little bit amateur. The same goes for your hair. Certain hats just don't look right with certain hairstyles. Is it as stunning as Horizon Zero Dawn? No. Is it bad? No. It scores a perfectly respectable 8. Bugs. Okay, I'll keep this category short like Micah's penis. The game is super clean. Yes, there is the odd glitch, such as an animal carcass spawning as you ride through the world, or your horse glitching out sometimes when in camp, but these are tiny, tiny occurrences and nothing breaks the immersion or mission progress. I wish I could say the same for Red Dead Online, but this is a review for the base game only. 8. Length. The game consists of six chapters and two epilogue chapters, and officially it bills in at around 60 hours. But if you finish this game in 60 hours, then you're playing video games completely wrong. I think I put 60 hours into the first chapter alone. There's so much to do from animal hunting, plant collecting, and a humongous amount of side quests and stranger interactions. Merely my own estimates, but I would say you'll put in at least 200 hours into this one and completionists maybe even a little bit more the main story feels long but i think it's supposed to i believe rockstar want you to feel how arthur felt drained tired and sick of being on the run so weirdly that's a positive thing never once did i get bored of the game and if the main story isn't quite doing it for you just go and hunt down the kkk or something yes you really can eight fun because it's huge, you can play this game however you want to. Sometimes the most fun thing to do is just to load up the game and do a bit of hunting or just explore or just antagonize people wherever the mood takes you. Red Dead Redemption 2 can fulfill you. It's really fun. Nine, replayability. 
Babe, are you playing that cowboy game again? Yes, I am, love, but it's technically not a cowboy game. It's more about how the world is constantly changing and some people, even now in 2020, feel like they just can't fit in. The thing with Arthur is I actually really kind of relate to him in a way because, yes, so of course you're going to play this game again. You'll probably finish the game and then read about mysteries on Reddit that you missed and we'll jump straight back in for another go. Holding down a relationship is going to prove difficult, but take it from me. I've dreamt more about Arthur Morgan than I have my girlfriend over the past two years. Ah, you sweet prince. Eight, value. So right now, as I speak, the game is £22 stroke $29 on all platforms. Now, depending on how your country is handling the coronavirus pandemic, you may well find yourself in lockdown at the moment, like I am here in the UK. Look no further for your lockdown companion. If you've never played this game before, it's 100% worth the value at that price. Even if it were to creep back up to release price for a first time player, go for it. Nine. And there we go. You probably knew from the very first category that this game was a winner and that you should probably buy it. So if you've made it this far, it's simply because of my witty humor and, and personality. Is that, is that it? An impressive score out of 100 for a very, very good game. If you're going to don your cowboy hat and explore the world of Red Dead Redemption 2, then enjoy. For more videos such as reviews like this and story recaps, please hit subscribe.